Gorilla Tag has already earned its place in the VR Hall of Fame. It's popularized a VR locomotion that I'm just gonna call monkey movement, where you use your arms as your legs when you're moving about. Your controllers are right there, why not? It makes sense. However, Gorilla Tag is a social game. You're there to show off your skills or play games with people. This video is to focus on single player campaigns where developers have built on the idea of monkey movement, whether that's through changing the mechanic a little bit themselves or just level design as a whole. While some of these games have multiplayer options within them, I'm really going to be focused on the single player piece. I will mention the multiplayer pieces, but those are not going to be a big focus today. See, now I'm a big 3D platform gamer. I have speedrun the Super Mario series in 64 and Super Mario Odyssey. I'm also a 2D platformer fan. I've speedrun and played a lot of them, including Super Meat Boy. There are traditional 3D platformers on the, you know, Quest and Steam pages where you got the Moss series, you got Max Mustard, but what I'm looking for is VR centric movement. I'm hoping to spend the next couple of minutes, next few minutes, giving you a summary of what you can expect from these games. And then at the end, I'll go through a really Really, really deep dive if you are still on the fence about buying one or the other on these monkey movement style games. Let's head over. So what games are we looking at today? We're looking at Out of Hand, No More Rainbows, Stilt, Toss, and Sky Climb. You can see the prices and the platforms here. Most of them are around $20, Sky Climb is $15, and most of them are available on PC and Quest with the exception of Out of Hand and Sky Climb. Out of Hand is getting a PC release, doesn't have a date yet, but it does have a Steam page. So something to look forward to and something to know for the PC VR people. Now I'm splitting these into two separate categories. So one is gonna be kind of a, I would call it like a VR platforming pure game where it is like, it's the monkey movement that I was talking about and everything's very smooth. You can interact with your terrain very easily. You know, it happens just kind of how you'd expect. Exactly like Gorilla Tag, you swat at a wall, you bounce back. Whereas uh, the other ones, which I'm gonna call grab and goes, that's gonna be toss and sky climb, are more akin to like an obstacle course. Like you know exactly where you need to go in order to get things done and you kind of grab something, you throw yourself and you grab something else and you stop. It's not smooth. You can make it kind of smooth by throwing, grabbing and throwing, grabbing and throwing, but it's not very fun and I would not I would say most people are not doing that. Grab and go can be fun, sorry. That particular part, like trying to be smooth with it doesn't work incredibly well. So I'm gonna talk about the monkey movement ones first, then we're gonna talk about the grab and goes. So, you came here to figure out what you wanted to buy um, and these monkey movement ones are probably the ones that you're looking at and for me the average gamer the average vr gamer is going to enjoy no more rainbows as their first vr platformer the best now that's a very conditional assignment because it's not even my personal favorite one but if i had to you know say hey average gamer who may have never played a VR platformer yet, never played Gorilla Tag, or even has played Gorilla Tag, and wants to try out a single player campaign. No More Rainbows, they get a 95 out of 100 on everything. Everything works really well. It has like the, you know, as much of a story as you need for, you know, a 3D platformer, VR platformer. It's got a really consistent graphics design that looks great. The levels are really well thought out. Um, they're kind of short. They have a consistency to them. Just, it, it, it hits a lot of the boxes. It has a mix of time trials and exploration. Now, I told you it's not my favorite and that's because my favorite is still. Stilt is both very beginner friendly, but also I think has a really long tail where like the depth of it is also incredible. So just to let you know, in Out of Hand and in No More Rainbows, you can move around with your, your hands and your, it's like your hands are touching the ground. And still, you have stilts attached to you. So the movement is much cleaner. You're able to swing lower on your hips and like stomach area versus like Out of Hand, you're like swinging like this. Um, so it's very comfortable. And additionally, the levels are longer. So the other two are, are more focused on time or like very, compact levels that just have a good design to them. Stilt has a, what I would call worlds. Like you, each level you go into is its own world that you're exploring. And while it has a path to the end, there are, you know, there are stops along the way. There are shortcuts that may be really hard to hit, um, which is why I think like speed running could be great. Um, and it's just really fun. Like to me, Stilt is a really incredible game. The designs are good enough and it has a lower amount of developers in the other two games and so like there's certain parts where it's not as fleshed out 
um, when it comes to both the design of the levels and like the design of the graphics themselves. But they're, you know, they're all hitting, you know, 85 out of 100. And to me, a lot of the times, especially with like world design and how you move around and the shortcuts and all of the collectibles, so many collectibles, that's where it hits 100 out of 100. I, I just absolutely love that. Out of hand, all of these games are really great. So I'm comparing, you know, three different apples that look really great. I'm probably going to eat all three. I did eat all three. But to me, Out of Hand was my least favorite of, of the bunch. It has a good story. Like the, the story is better and like you actually get kind of attached to the characters. It's not, it's not an Oscar winner, but like you get attached to the characters a little bit um, and it's fun. It's enjoyable. Uh, it, it's nice. And if you like the whichever one you end up buying, you should buy the other two and play them because you like them. So. This is all to say, those three are really great. No more rainbows if you're the average gamer. I think you're gonna like it a little better. Uh, but if you are like me, you come from a speedrunning background or you like the idea of a speedrunning background um, where you get to explore stuff, then I think Stilt is the winner there. If you need a story to keep you going, then let's go back to Out of Hand. So now it's time to get into the grab and goes, those being Toss and Sky Climb. Toss really nails it like if you if you wrote the prompt so think about it like ai if you'd wrote the prompt for what toss is and what toss tries to do it nails it it hits 100 out of 100. now that doesn't mean that to me it's my favorite game there's lots of shooters that are really great and i just am not a big shooter person it's, it's just not my 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 bag but toss delivers on everything that it says it's going to do and like all the levels are very clean, has a very clean design, very minimalistic, very minimalistic, which I'm sure made the development a little easier to do. Um, and each level just has like a couple of objectives. That's it. And you get a lot of those levels. They do get very difficult. Um, and so if you want like a time trial esque or like very much like each time you get into a level, there's a mission and you can see the end of the mission when you get in there and you just go for it. Toss is for you. It does a really great job of it. Uh, you know, way to go to the Toss developers for nailing the vision that they had. Uh, now we get into Sky Climb and this is the one that I am really disappointed in. The design and the mechanics both lack a lot. And it definitely was a little bit more built towards multiplayer, but it has a long single player and I was bored the entire time I was playing Sky Climb. The design and the characters and like the, the world characters are just not fun to be around. The mechanics are floaty, which uh, takes a little time to get used to just in general. It has a lot of good ideas, but nothing ever hits. And I, I really suggest that unless you've played all four of these and you need something else to you get you by and you want to play another one you can get sky climb but i really don't suggest it it's just not something that i really loved now i did say that this is mostly about single player but i wanted to touch on the multiplayer real quick um everything has multiplayer except for out of hand tosses is very kind of a throwaway uh, a toss away if you will um just because you just do the levels with people that's it it does what it does but don't buy it for multiplayer like I said, Sky Climb, I think was built for multiplayer. I think it has a lot of good ideas. The levels are different from single player to multiplayer. And so I, I think there's a lot of possibility there. But again, the mechanics aren't fun enough for me to get in and go beyond the one time that I popped in and checked it out. And then you have Stilt and No More Rainbows. Stilt to me is the for sure winner of multiplayer. So many great game modes, really fun. The, again, the ability to launch yourself off of your stilt gives you so much movement. There's little power-ups where you can shoot people. There's movement options. Those are available in single player and multiplayer. It's a lot of fun. Like, it's so much fun. If you join my Discord and play with me, please, I really enjoyed it. It made me feel like a kid again. I had so much fun. No More Rainbows has developed something. I would say it's, it's, it's kind of similar to what Stilt built, but because of the less launch distance of the character and just kind of how the character moves around, it's less inclined for multiplayer, in my opinion, especially across like a broad range of players. And I think that if you were going to play the, the lesser modes in No More Rainbows, you would just play Gorilla Tag. That's my opinion on the multiplayer. Uh, again, those first three games, you just can't miss. They're so great. Uh, and now we're going to break down those three games into very, very detailed words. So check those out if you want to. Like I said in the intro, everything I have provided up until this point has been a summary of my experience and feelings playing these games so that you could quickly make an informed decision on what to buy. 
However, I know some people want more, so this is a detailed look at each of the games. Like I said in the summary, Stilt is my personal favorite and I think has a real chance as a longer form speedrun, has great multiplayer, and just like a holistic campaign that I really enjoyed. So I wanted to go over that first. While Out of Hand and No More Rainbows lean a bit heavier on replicating monkey movement from Gorilla Tag, Stilt reinvents the movement to be a bit more beginner friendly and floatier. As someone who is a heavy user of VR, the floatiness paired with the ease of the tutorial and the first couple of levels got to be a bit frustrating as I found myself wanting to be better, faster, stronger in less time. Make no mistake, future level length and platforming challenges soon found me biting my tongue, but it's something that I would expect all VR diehards to go through up front in this game. I actually think that, that the development decision here is very sound, and the addition of collectibles made it very reasonable for beginners to slowly up their game by searching around and doing speed tests. Stilt has one large overworld that acts almost exclusively as a segue into the actual levels you would be looking to play. There are five portions of the overworld, each containing four levels to play. Up until the last portion of the game, the overworld is a bit of an afterthought and doesn't have the charm of, say, No More Rainbows many overworlds. But it does what it needs to, has minimal purpose. Each level contains five possible gifts, which you can think of similar to Super Mario 64 stars, that ultimately gate your way into the next portion of the overworld. You need eight of the 20 gifts in each section to move forward. Three gifts are hidden about the levels. One gift is awarded for collecting X amount of stamps. You can think of the music notes in Banjo-Kazooie. And one gift is awarded for beating the level at a set speed, that's a gold speed. For extra fun, you can go for platinum speed times or reaching the top balloon at the end of each level. You can kind of think of that as getting to the top of the pole in Super Mario 3D World. Compared to the other monkey movement titles, these levels end up being much longer with more to explore and extra sets of challenges in your way, as well as extra sets of shortcuts. The lengths of the levels is one of my favorite things about the game, but it does lead to the most annoying mechanic in my opinion. Those stamps that I mentioned before are plentiful throughout the stage, and if you die in the level, you lose 10 stamps from the amount already collected in this stage run. If you run out of stamps, then you have to restart. I don't have a problem with that, but whenever you die, you get loaded to a screen where you can choose to leave, restart, or continue by spending your 10 stamps that you had from the level. You then have to choose what to do, which in difficult portions of stages where you may die multiple times quickly, Time between gameplay gets cumbersome and the restart and continue buttons are right next to each other and I think you can already tell where that can lead on quick fire menu presses. Despite that one very small complaint from me, this game is absolutely decked out with challenges, opportunities to try for more, and the replayability here is higher than any of the other titles in my opinion. Still by far has the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to content. An additional fact, if you get to the end credits, you'll find out that this game was primarily made by one dev, one artist, and one composer, along with VR Kiwi as a publisher. Something that I really find incredible is that it was made by such a small team of platforming enthusiasts. I am really excited for the future of collectathons and speedrun platforming in the coming years, in no small part because of what Stilt has done here. No More Rainbows is the closest to a Gorilla Tag replica when it comes to physics and movement options. There are no shenanigans with control in the air or extra extensions of the arm. Everything is just pure monkey movement. If I was to dare a comparison, NMR feels a bit Super Mario 64, Stilt feels a bit Super Mario Odyssey, and Out of Hand feels a bit Super Mario Galaxy. Once you've sent your body in a direction, you're going that direction, and you better hope that you aimed and moved appropriately. Because of this, No More Rainbows is the least beginner friendly, however, I don't see that as being a major issue for beginners, as it is still mildly beginner friendly. The balance between being a linear game with exploration throughout is the marker that this game absolutely nails. You get a little bit of story up front where you are woken up grumpy by the happiness of the world around you, and you're just an evil dude that needs to crush everyone's fun. There is one main boss character that seems to be the purveyor of all the fun, and you chase that character from overworld to overworld. In the larger world hub, you have access to five story overworlds, plus a bonus overworld. There isn't much to explore here, but once you enter a specific overworld, you are greeted by happy-go-lucky characters that are just enjoying their time. By killing them, you can unlock individual levels. These overworlds offer much exploration with an extra level on top of six story levels, opening up upon the death of all the happy characters. The game has two primary collectibles, the death of the happy guys and a horse with the heart in it. Once you enter an individual level, you typically have 10 characters to find and kill and the three horses that are much better hidden. 
On the first pass, you'll spend time finding all the collectibles, and once you finish the level, you'll be given an opportunity to time trial the level. There is consistency among all of the levels for a 45 second reward time, and that consistency is really nice to have. The only one that is not 45 seconds is the very last boss fight. The difficulty ramps up at a steady rate with the last world truly being a real challenge for all levels of play. There are different services that have actual factors in movement and if you break enough things in a short time range, you can get rage such that your movement speed is increased and your distance is increased. The game really hits a B plus or A for all aspects of the game and the consistency and attention to detail is what gives it a very, very small win for the average gamer over out of hand and still for me. I think that any level of player can enjoy this title while enjoying the art style and the movement for everything that it is worth. The addition of the bonus world that came free with the game later in its release cycle shows a dedicated development team behind such a great game. Out of Hand's physics focus on a body that is much closer to the ground, causing your hand motions to be closer to your shoulders than your chest or stomach areas. The quality of the physics is very good, but the higher frame for your movement made my arms get tired a little earlier than, say, the other ones. In addition to traditional monkey movement, the game adds three small direction change movements that can be done anytime in the air. This opens up for more mistakes at initial launch, and to its credit, faster movement than one would necessarily choose otherwise. This level of control made speedrunning through levels and exploring for collectibles much easier, and I loved the mechanics as I played with them. Additionally, there is an auto-lock brawling system that is just you punching the air a bunch. It ultimately doesn't lead to many interesting interactions in my opinion, but allows for different boss fight styles than a pure platformer. The game runs in a fairly linear path, so broader exploration isn't really encouraged, but the collectibles that are possible on each level still lead to intriguing mysteries enough to keep the player interested. Where this game truly leaves the other two in the dirt is story. Now don't get me wrong, it isn't an Oscar winner by far, but there are characters with lines of dialogue and reasons enough to care about what you are platforming through. It truly builds a fun ecosystem for you to get immersed as a weird alien creature. The most prize collectibles are in fact creature avatars that you can change into after getting them. There are 12 avatars to get and there are 300 mutant chromosomes for you to pick up along the way collectathon style. While I do like No More Rainbow's boss levels a bit better, the brawling portions of the boss fights at least gave me a sense of something a little new that made them worth the brawling mechanics inclusion at all. Just like Stilt, I think Out of Hand does a great job of catering to all levels of players, if not a little harder to get started in the tutorial phase, and the characters keep you invested almost immediately. The overall quality of the experience is very high, and I was very pleased to have finished the game in its entirety, however the replayability is low to me. I would consider this a well worth one shot platformer.